Good morning and welcome to our July 19th streaming service here from sunny Bremerton, Washington. Our announcements for this week is, uh, the first one is our, we have been projecting the date of July 26th as our reopening for public worship. We uh, have decided we're going to push that date back um, based on what's going on in society with the ramping up of cases of COVID-19. Uh, our projected date at this point will be September 13th, which also coincides with the beginning of our fall worship schedule. Um, our worship and music committees, property and finance, and elected church council continue to meet so that we can do that in a prudent and safe manner when that day arrives. Uh, additionally, Luther Haven is not open for daytime activities or any activities at this moment. We await word from the Luther Haven board uh, to find out if there will be an opening for that for some limited activities. Uh, next week, Pastor Meeker will return uh, from his vacation. So once again, we thank and welcome Pastor Beth Orling for being here with us today to help us out. Um, our opening devotion and silent reflection comes from Christine Danielson this week, and it comes from 1 John 4, verses 10 and 11. This is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Rolling. Good morning once again. I'm honored and pleased to be with you and welcome to all who are tuned in and to those in the worship space. We begin in the name in which we were baptized. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance. We deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and in your spirit lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Jesus Christ. Through him we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us now live in hope, for hope does not disappoint because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Faithful God, most merciful judge, you care for your children with firmness and compassion. By your spirit, nurture us who live in your kingdom, that we may be rooted in the way of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now I ask the children to come and, and pay really good attention, and you're going to Hear your names, so listen up. So I'm standing by where we, what we call the baptismal font or fountain. And when you were little, or even when you were not a baby, maybe you were a baby, maybe a little bigger, 
They poured water into this basin, this beautiful font. And the pastor asked your parents some questions. Do you want to have Evelyn baptized? And your parents said, yes. And then the pastor went on. As you bring Jillian to receive the gift of baptism, you have some work to do to live with Arrow among God's faithful people, to bring trigger to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach Austin the Lord's Prayer, the Creed and the Ten Commandments, and to place in Allie's hands the Holy Scriptures and nurture Eva in faith and prayer so that Tulip and all the children may learn to trust God. You were asked to proclaim Christ through word and deed to care for others and for God's world and to work for justice and peace. Those are big promises to ask a baby. So they asked your parents if they would help you to grow in the Christian faith. And the parents all said, we will. Then you have some sponsors or godparents who were there. And the whole church that was sitting here or wherever you were baptized, and they were asked, do you promise to support Evelyn, Arrow, Jillian, and Trigger? And to pray for Austin, Allie, Eva, and Tulip? And they all said, yes, we will. And if your name didn't get read and you're watching, you just put your own name in when a name comes up. And all of you think of this when, when I say what the pastor said, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And everybody in the church said, you belong to Christ in whom you are baptized. Alleluia. And then the pastor said a prayer of thanks and asked God to sustain Arrow with the gift of the Holy Spirit and to give Trigger the spirit of wisdom and understanding and to give Allie the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord and to give Eva the spirit of joy in God's presence now and forever big blessing. Then he made little crosses on your foreheads. And he said, Evelyn, Jillian, Austin, Tulip, Billy, or whoever your name is. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And everyone said, Amen, which means yes, yes. And then they gave you a candle, and someone said, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever walks in my light will have the light of life. And everybody welcomed you. And they cheered and clapped. And maybe you got to walk up and down, or you were carried up and down the aisle. And that's how it was. You were baptized, sealed by the Holy Spirit, marked with Jesus' cross, the invisible cross that never goes away. Know that you are loved and that your baptism and God's love in you endures forever. Amen. So ask your parents to tell you more about your special day later after church. The Holy Gospel, which is appointed for today in the church year, comes from Matthew chapter 13. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. 
But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? The master answered, an enemy has done this. And the slave said to him, then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, no, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat among them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will tell the reapers, collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then Jesus left the crowds and went into the house. And his disciples approached him saying, explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are angels. Just as the weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all evildoers, and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. Let anyone with ears listen. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I spoke with the children about baptism because it is such a gift and an enduring treasure. And you might have noticed an additional name that you didn't recognize at the end of the list. It was Billy, my grandson in New Jersey, whom I baptized 14 years ago. Today was set to be his confirmation day, or as we like to say, affirmation of his baptism. And since he and most of you were baptized when you were too young to remember, and since someone else made faith promises for you, the church gives you the opportunity at some point in your life to make those statements for yourself. And the pastor asks you the same questions that your sponsors or godparents answered for you when you were babies. Do you turn your back on the forces of evil? Do you believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Will you devote yourself to the teachings of Jesus, to fellowship in the church, to the breaking of bread and prayer? And as children grow up, as you children will grow up, your pastor and parents will help you affirm your faith. Billy studied with his pastor and prepared for confirmation just as you will. And often grown-ups who are new to the church also prepare for baptism or for affirmation of baptism because there is no age limit to the welcome into Jesus' family. You adults, no doubt, remember when you were confirmed or when you entered the church as new members. You might have been 13 or 14 or you might have been 50. But you were asked to live your faith to study and learn along with the congregation, to come to church, and to be willing to serve others in Jesus' name. Well, coming to church is not an option right now for most of us, but the church is not closed. The church is the people, and you're coming together in your hearts. And thanks to the modern te technology that we have and the willing hands to use it, we can meet online to share word and music and even fellowship. 
We're joined together even though we are apart. These trying times require a lot of patience. I can only imagine the conversations that went on to change your projected opening date. Patience, endurance, wisdom. But in this time of patience, we are learning to use our computers more effectively, and our face masks may be hot and uncomfortable, but we're getting used to them. There are some interesting creative designs to watch for out there. And we're supporting one another in different ways, maybe by phone, or by chatting on Facebook, or by sending notes, or letters, or postcards. These times also bring a share of sadness. I had planned to be present at Billy's confirmation, but it's not safe for this grandma to travel to New Jersey right now. His parents would have liked to have given him a big party, but that wasn't possible either. The church planned for the confirmation day to be celebrated in their parking lot today, but just this past week, they canceled all in-person worship due to the virus. So, we will just have to be patient. Today's gospel is about patience and about sadness. The farmer plants wheat seeds and looks forward to a good crop. He will water the plants throughout the season and watch them grow. And he'll harvest the wheat some months later. He'll sell some of it for his living, and he'll grind some of it into flour to bake bread. The sadness in the story is that someone planted poisonous seed in the farmer's field, and the workers come and tell him that there are weeds growing up among the wheat. and They want to know if they should try to pull them up. Well, that particular kind of weed looked a lot like wheat. The roots entwined themselves among the wheat roots, and it would be nearly impossible to pull them apart without tearing out the wheat seedlings as well. So, at harvest time, the workers will cut down all the plants, and then they'll be able to tell the difference, and they'll separate them. They'll gather the wheat into the barn, and they'll bind up the weeds into logs for fuel. It's a story of revolutionary patience because the farmer and his helpers will continue to water the field knowing there are weeds getting water too. And the workers will not be asked to judge the difference in the two types of plant. They're just asked to water and nurture and later wait for the harvest. So it is with us as the church and as people in our everyday lives, we're not asked to judge one another. We're asked to baptize and nurture and help people understand how to be Jesus' disciple. Like the farmer's helpers, we need courage, hope, and patience. And we trust that God will care for the wheat field from the moment the seeds are sown until they are harvested. It's a great blessing that we do not have the job of judging one another. It's a great blessing that we do not have to be judged by one another. And Jesus' story warns us clearly not to identify people as evil or as good. Billy's pastor loves all the kids in the confirmation class. And Pastor Meeker loves all of you kids as you grow in faith. And you know very well that God loves each of you, child or adult, strong or shaky in faith, active in service, or still trying to figure out where you fit in. Remember the story in the Garden of Eden where there were two trees that God pointed out to Adam and Eve? There was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The tree of life was God's gift to Adam and Eve and to the world. And the tree of knowledge, unfortunately, was the one that they chose to eat from. And so, the story goes, they and we became a field with both wheat 
and weeds growing in us. Martin Luther said we are saints and sinners at the same time. Saints because we are fully and irrevocably loved by God. Sinners because we live in the world and sometimes forget our calling to sainthood and the brokenness of life trips us up. Our good motives are mixed with thoughtless acts. Our careless words mixed in with our noble deeds. But God's revolutionary patience sustains us God stays with us while the weeds and the wheat grow in our lives. God nurtures the saints and forgives the sinners at the same time. God's patience is a comfort. The revolutionary part calls us to stay with the challenge of wheat and weeds growing together, not to try to uproot someone else's problem, but to tend to our own garden seeking to root out the things that would be causes of sin, the things that would separate us from God and from one another. Jesus calls us to remember our baptism every day, to remember that we were sealed with the cross, sealed with the Holy Spirit to help us today, tomorrow, and always. And so our patience with ourselves and our patience with the world is not the kind of patience that gives up hope. It's not the patience that says, there's nothing we can do. It's not the patience that says, just live and let live. It's not the patience that says, I can't do anything about it, so I'm not going to try. It's revolutionary patience that seeks to change the things that can be changed. God knows. We can't redeem ourselves. So God offers us, as beloved children, the help we need. God offers us less judgment and more joy. And God helps us to stand strongly in the world to show and tell others what we know about forgiveness, compassion, and service. That's what I would tell Billy on his confirmation day. That's what I try to tell myself every day that I struggle. And that's what I hope you will take to heart. God is patient and loving with us so that we can be patient and loving with one another. Jesus calls us not to judge, but to serve. Every day, is Confirmation Day. Every day we affirm our baptism and remember we are children of God marked with the cross of Christ, sealed by the Holy Spirit. The United Church of Canada has this hymn in their hymnal. The first and fourth verses are these. God says, Be still so you may hear the words I whisper in your ear. If you listen, you will know I'm with you always where you go. God says, reach out. The world's in need and wants a word, a song, a deed. I send you forth to speak, to sing, to act for Christ in everything. Dearly baptized, dearly confirmed, and one day to be confirmed, God walks with you on your baptismal journey, always patient and loving. May you walk with one another patiently and loving as well as God gives you strength. We pray for God's angels to collect out of our lives all the causes of sin. And then Jesus says, you will shine like the sun in the kingdom of your Father. Amen.
shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Blood, I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, play. Set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirror dear, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed, which we share with Christians throughout the world. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. God of the harvest, you sow the good seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ into your field. Help your church throughout the world to be both diligent and patient, full of resolve and gentleness, 
that our witness may be faithful to your will. In your goodness, Lord, have mercy. Gracious God, by water and the Spirit, you claimed us as your own and gave us new life. You made us members of your body, the church. Be at work in our lives and empower us to live lives worthy of our calling. Guide us to patiently, lovingly, and courageously live as disciples of Jesus Christ. In your goodness, Lord, have mercy. God of hope, you accompany those who suffer, and you are near to the brokenhearted. Open our hearts to your children who are lonely and abandoned, who feel trapped by despair, and all who suffer in any way, especially Dan, Nicholas, Paul, Lisa, Peter, Nick, Luella, Mary, Anita, Leanne, Gail, Trudy, Jim, Jerry, Leon, Alma, Mariah, David, Richard, Brad, and those we name now aloud before you or in our hearts. Guide those in authority in every nation. Hold back in all nations the forces of oppression and stop the hands of violence. Help all who work to care for those suffering from the pandemic. In your goodness, Lord, have mercy. God of the seasons, in the midst of summer, give us refreshment, renewal, and new opportunities. We pray for the safety of those who travel. We pray for those who cannot take the rest they need. We pray for Pastor Meeker and his family as they plan their return to taking up the work set before them here. In your goodness, Lord, have mercy. God of life, those who have died in you shine like the sun in your endless kingdom. We remember with thanksgiving the saints of all times and places and saints close to us, especially those we name before you and Congressman Lewis and Reverend Vivian. Gather us with them on the day of salvation. In your goodness, Lord, have mercy. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, We offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We prepare for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God, It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer praise and thanks to you, holy God, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth, And the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends of Jesus, come to the table. Receive nourishment for your journey. Wherever you are, at home with bread and wine, or here in the worship space, or if you are feasting on Christ in your heart by faith, know that the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ is shed for you. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you and keep you now and always. Amen. Thank you for worshiping together today. Thank you for the singers and musicians. Thank you for the computer and sound people. God bless you on your week. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God. Separate.
liberate us from the love of God poured out in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus, our Lord. 